elementary music teacher friend, you love what you do, but you might feel unappreciated and in fact, unseen some days. You may even feel like you're on a music teacher island and just want to connect with other music teachers who can relate to both your struggles and wins when it comes to teaching elementary music. I get you and understand completely the feelings you're having. That's why each and every week, the Elementary Music Teacher Podcast will provide you with solo and guest episodes that will help you realize you're not alone in your music teaching journey. Throughout each episode, my goal is for you to be able to walk away with actionable steps and ideas to help you feel like you're ready to take on the new week with whatever challenges may be thrown your way. Hi, I'm your host, Jessica Peresta, and I'm so glad you're here. Whether you're at home, in your car, in the shower, or wherever else you're listening, grab your cup of coffee or whatever other beverage is nearby and listen in to the Elementary Music Teacher Podcast. Hey friend, I want to let you know about a free workshop that I am so excited about called How to Design Curriculum for Your Elementary Music Classroom, Five Easy Ways to Simplify Lesson Planning. This free workshop will happen live at various dates and times throughout the year. So sign up so you'll be notified when the workshop is and you can go to subscribepage.com forward slash curriculum design workshop, or simply click on the link in the show notes. In this workshop, we'll go over starting with the end in mind, knowing your desired results for yourself and students, planning assessment before mapping out the lessons, and having a system in place. When you come to this workshop, I'm going to show you how you can make the ultimate shift from struggling with weekly lesson planning feeling overwhelmed and exhausted knowing how to plan relevant lessons to knowing how and what to plan each week by adding systems and a proven framework to your planning. So to sign up, once again, the link is subscribepage.com forward slash curriculum design workshop. And I can't wait to see you there. Hi, I'm Batsheva Frankel from Overthrowing Education, a part of the Education Podcast Network, just like the show you're listening to now. Shows on the network are individually owned and opinions expressed may not reflect others. Find other interesting education podcasts at edupodcastnetwork.com. Hello, friends. Welcome back to the Elementary Music Teacher Podcast. This episode is going to be a little bit different than my normal episodes that you've heard. I always have something completely planned and maybe outlined that is very topic-based, whether it's solo or a guest episode. And I had a different episode scheduled for this week, but I decided I wanted to share my Lemons to Lemonade story because I know that life happens. Uh... I have two sons that play baseball, so the curveballs can be thrown your way. And that's exactly what happened to me. So ironically, a lot of my summer, well, most of my summer episodes that the summer series where I was sharing my favorite things, I recorded that actually back in the spring. uh, Well, end of April, early May. And I had all intentions of going and teaching at this virtual school I had been talking about and I had been planning and researching and everything I had been kind of sharing, just some snippets throughout those episodes. Um, and even some of the episodes in August, I've, I've mentioned that I just didn't want to go back and re-record things. So you heard me talking about starting at a virtual school and how I'm preparing and how I'm planning for it and ways I'll adapt classroom management and all those things. But here's where the lemon story comes in. I had been preparing to go into this virtual teaching role for K to four music since March. And then about the second week of June, get an email that the school decided not to open. And it wasn't just the music position eliminated. It was the whole school just was not launching like they had been telling us they were going to. So I had to take a minute to just process. Let me just be honest. I kind of let my brain go to a a place of kind of frustration and anger and all transparency. I had turned down 
two other positions to to take this one. And one was a teaching role and one would be in an education system, but just in a different role. And um, just a little frustrated, to be honest. I didn't know how to proceed. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know. I didn't want to start the whole process again of looking for jobs. If you've ever been there, and I know most of you listening have, it is such a tedious, tedious process. So as you all know, you look at the local school districts where you live, you will go to Indeed or LinkedIn or look in different Facebook groups of who is hiring. And I have bookmarked different job sites or the districts I just told you about to just check occasionally what positions they have available. And so I just kind of had done that on occasion from time to time. And so once I got past my kind of shock phase, I went, all right, what am I going to do moving forward? I am so extremely blessed to have the flexibility to be able to support music teachers all over the world in my business. This podcast, I got interviewed on, you've heard me promoting bumpers every week on the Education Podcast Network, and I got interviewed, and I think that episode's coming out in October, but on their podcast, he's interviewing the various podcasters in the network. And we were talking about, he said, what is one of your favorite things about having your podcast? And I could have said anything like, you know, I don't know. Um, I get down, I get a lot of downloads or uh, the feedback or whatever. But I told him, honestly, for me, it is seeing the amount of music teachers that I'm able to reach from not me, but the content I come up with, I'm hoping that it inspires or touches a music teacher's life. I do not take lightly who I bring on my show. Uh, I don't take lightly what topics we discuss. It is very important to me to make this show relevant and conversational. And so what I was telling him is the fact that when I go and look at the, um, stats and st- I guess statistics uh, each month, seeing these countries of music teachers who are listening across the world is mind boggling to me. When I felt like I, um, I'm going to get back into the lemonade story in a minute, so stay with me. When I felt called to start my business seven years ago, I had no idea what that meant, what I was supposed to do with that, what direction to take. I, my brain wanted to go back into the classroom. I've shared that we moved from Oklahoma to Arkansas and I just kept feeling this nudging and calling over and over and over and it wouldn't go away. So I said, you know what, I'm going to do this. I'm going to start and just see what happens. And then, you know, maybe do it for a year and get back into the classroom, not having any idea I would start a podcast or I would eventually have two courses in a membership site or that I would be able to present at various music ed workshops. I, I, even got to go to Philly again this, you know, in August. And so I feel so blessed to be doing the work I'm doing. And I know that that was not a coincidence that I felt called to do that seven years ago. And here we are today. But I have also shared that I've also missed teaching. I've missed being in the classroom. I also know that I'm a mom of three boys and we are very busy. And so I knew if I got another teaching position, it needed to make sense for our life. So let's get back into the lemonade story, shall we? So that door closed, the virtual teaching position. And I had mentioned, and like I said, this episode is kind of all over the place. And you can tell I don't really have an outline. I just decided to come on here and share my heart because I am going to, at the end, wrap it up and talk to you about how this applies to you. So I started doing what I had mentioned earlier and looking at what opportunities are out there. Or are there even any opportunities in the middle of June are there teaching positions really available? And let's be honest, music teaching positions come available very rarely, one per school, right? And so I really didn't think I'd see anything. I saw, but I did. I saw two positions. One is a public school music teaching position, elementary school. They're an arts integration school. They're an amazing school. It's about 30 minutes away from my house though. And which is, that's fine. That's my teaching job in Tulsa was that far away. But now um, I don't want to move my own children out of the district they currently attend just because this is where we're already planted. And so I did take the interview. It was an amazing school. Uh, There was 
really nothing wrong with it. There was no red flags. There was no, this opportunity just wouldn't be right for you. In fact, it felt like it would be right. It would be a great fit. I felt very comfortable in the interview. The fine arts coordinator for the district was in there. My I said my principal, the principal and the assistant principal. And to be honest with you, I felt like it went really well. Then this other music teaching position, it'd be preschool and elementary all the way through grade four, opened up at a private school about 20 minutes away from my home. And I thought, okay, let me just see what happens and go and interview with them as well. So I did. And to be honest, I thought I would have clarity after the interview one way or another. And I have shared this post on social media and a lot of you maybe saw it was just a, on Instagram and I shared it on my Facebook page, a very candid photo and on my Facebook group of me just sitting in the trampoline park right by my house. I took my boys to jump and I just, it was literally that day that I kind of just was what do I do? What decision do I make? And then I had just had clarity. And as we went to the trampoline park, I decided to just kind of share it out. So um, I lost my train of thought. But yeah. So going back to the story, I had both of the interviews. I, and that's what I was going to say. I thought I would have clarity after the interviews of which way to proceed. Full-time position in the public school system, which is my heart, my passion, where I always thought I would be. Or the part-time position in the private school and I, I, I it was very tough because when you have um oh i guess i should preface this with saying i did get offered both positions which if you had asked me in a million years if that would have happened everybody was like that's so exciting though how cool it is but it's also wow what a lot of pressure to <laughs> you know i guess in a way it would have been easier if i was just offered one then it would be like oh that's the one but when you're offered multiple positions, all of a sudden you're the ball's in your court and you're like, well, what do I do? And in fact, the public school wanted to move pretty fast because let's be honest, school was starting pretty quickly and they wanted an answer the next day. Um, and I was going to the private school to teach a sample 20 minute lesson for their camp kids the day after I was supposed to let the public school know. And so I prayed about it, thought about it made a pros and cons list, literally three pages long in a notebook, talked to my husband about it. My kids had opinions, which I do listen to their opinions, but also they're not the final say, <laughs> but yes, I, then I actually, if I just can keep it real with you guys, I weighed how important is the domestic musician, the elementary music teacher podcast, my harmony membership, my courses, curriculum design roadmap, elementary music teacher blueprint course, how important is all of that to me? Would I be willing to let that go? Because in all transparency, if I got a full-time teaching position, my business, I really do feel like would take a ginormous, I wouldn't even say step back. It would be backing up like a whole entire semi truck. Like it would be, um, my husband even said that it would start fizzling because I would just not have a lot of time because this other school it wasn't just the full-time part that's not that's not it it would be also they um, had a lot of after-school commitments they wanted me to do and a lot of extra things um that I just won't get into but which isn't bad it's just every school's different and I just knew capacity wise I just I would have to devote a lot of time on the weekends and at night to my business to keep it going <sighs> so I knew that as hard as it was, I needed to turn that position down. It was very sad. I actually cried. It wasn't easy. But when I went the following day and did the sample lesson at the private school and I talked to the principal again, I got to meet a drama teacher. I got to see the closet where instruments are stored right now to see where I would be teaching and then kind of envisioned it thought about it. We discussed, um, when I tell you this is a super supportive school, it's a super supportive school where they're literally asking me, what curriculum do you want us to buy? They're asking me, um, they want to give me a monthly budget. I mean, tell, I'm telling you like, without getting into every detail, I felt when I drove off that day, I felt such a peace about the decision that it was still very hard for me to turn down 
the other p- position, but this one I knew is where I was supposed to be without a doubt. So all that to say, I'm really excited to announce, and this will not change <laughs> because uh, I kept talking about this the virtual school that I'm going to be starting at, but I'm really excited to announce that I am I'm going to be teaching elementary music again, and I'm beyond excited, and it's going to be amazing, and I can't wait to share ideas here on this podcast of still talking about what I did in the public school setting, and my I've always loved sharing my story about starting music. Uh, restarting a program from the ground up and what I did and how I did it. And I'm excited, even though it's so funny to when I was talking to this principal about what curriculum to use, I am going to be um, probably using music play online just to keep it real. But I also told her, I said, but I'm going to be, I've already designed my own curriculum and have my own lesson plans. And I'm just going to be doing kind of a mix and match of everything. And her face was like, oh my gosh, that's amazing. So she is in full support of me keeping the business going, thinks it's amazing. And to be honest, what's really fun too, is this was just like all the puzzle pieces falling into place. They've been really wanting to help their teachers with getting Google Classrooms going and kind of more tech integration. And she knew I have my master's now in educational technology. So I'm just so excited. It's the perfect fit for me. And this business of mine that I'm so beyond passionate about is not going anywhere. So I get to do the best of both worlds and still share my passion and heart with music teachers every single week right here on this podcast and in the products and services I offer. But I also get to go back and teach kids music again and work with the teachers in this school building to help them with integrating technology and things like that. So I'm so excited and I will be sharing snippets of my teaching journey on the podcast, as well as bringing you guys content that you can use in your classroom as well. So I want to wrap up by saying, how does this whole story apply to you? What I didn't realize is by just being vulnerable and transparent when I shared that Instagram post was the amount of messages I received by just me talking about how I was feeling about, um, you know, feeling kind of defeated and just sad about it, but then not knowing what decision to make. There's like a fork in the road and you don't know which way to go. You don't know, am I supposed to do this or this? And I had so many teachers reaching out saying, you have no idea how much this impacted me because I found myself in that situation. Or I also in my head thought I would be in this kind of set setting and then it changed for me or different stories coming out of um, either people been out of the classroom a while and going back in, or they felt going from full-time to part-time or part-time to full-time or public to private or private to public. And all that to say, I wanted to just let you know that it's okay to change your mind. It's okay if the journey you envision for yourself changes. It's okay if you think you're going to be at the same school for 30 years and you're there for five and then you have no idea what the path in front of you is going to be, um, what it's going to look like. It's okay if an opportunity comes up and you decide to switch to that school the next year without even in a million years thinking that would be your journey. So I just want to encourage you. Maybe you're in a lemon situation right now and you're just kind of like, you're either not happy where you're at or you're feeling this pulling to maybe do something outside of the classroom like I am. Or maybe you're feeling this pulling to switch schools or you've seen some opportunities opening up in your area, but you're just not quite sure. Then I want to just encourage you that There's nothing wrong with taking the interview. There's nothing wrong with having the conversation or at least applying and seeing what happens. And you just never know what opportunities are going to arise. So just keep your eyes open. But I also want to say, maybe you're in the lemonade situation and you love the school you're at. You love your your teaching situation. You don't want to move. You don't want to change. There's nothing (laughs) pulling at your heart saying, this needs to change. And that's great too. So whether you find yourself in a lemon or lemonade situation, I just want to encourage you as you continue going throughout the school year to just teach the kids that are in front of you to plan instruction based upon the students you see. Love on those kids. Bring music to them. Don't worry about what everybody else around you is doing and just use the ideas you have. But also I think using your personality and your teaching style 
and matching what your students need is really important as well. So I hope this story encourages someone. And even, even if it doesn't, I just wanted to come on here today and just kind of share my heart with you and just a little bit of behind the scenes of what's been going on in my life. And uh, I've actually, at the time of this recording, I have been in my current school building now for two weeks and I love it. It's been so fun. And I am just, yeah, I'm, I'm loving it. So, um, You guys, I will be back next week with a new guest episode and I can't wait for you to hear it and we will continue going with the podcast and I hope you're having an amazing week and I'll see you soon. Well, hey there. Thank you so much for listening into the Elementary Music Teacher Podcast. There is an exclusive Facebook group just for listeners of this podcast and any elementary music teacher called the Elementary Music Teacher Community Facebook Group. Come on over and join us there where we have conversations around the podcast episodes and encourage each other each and every week. And also head to my website, thedomesticmusician.com. I have some free resources there that you can download to help you gain traction in your classroom today as well as the blog and the membership site and all kinds of other goodies to help you keep going in your music teaching journey. I cannot wait to keep connecting with you and encouraging you and spurring you on in your journey of teaching elementary music. Hang in there, have an amazing week, and I will see you soon.